a lot of things I discovered while setting up this radio. It's a great radio, I think, for the money. And the reason we replaced it was our Toyota radio completely died. And this video will cover how to set up the VB Tech CarPlay radio for a 2016 Toyota Highlander. On a 2016 Toyota Highlander, putting in the VB Tech radio is pretty easy. There's some parts that need to be removed, and I'll go over them in the order they need to be removed. First, this piece comes out. It goes all the way to the end. Pull it out here. Get something behind there like a plastic spludger. I'm not going to do it because I've already installed the radio. And this piece will come out and carefully pull this away and then pull it away at the end there. And there's uh, two wires that disconnect behind here. And this whole piece can be put aside. Next, you need to pull this trim piece off. It goes all the way over here. And that just pulls off. Again, put something behind it, pry it off. And once that piece comes out, you can pull this vent out. It just simply pulls out. And then this vent pulls out and that's it. That's the only parts you have to remove. Behind these, you will see four 10 millimeter bolts. Remove those bolts and the radio comes out. Well, since I've already installed the VB Tech radio, I'm not gonna cover that. But what I will cover is some of the configuration and setup issues that you might encounter when setting up the VB Tech radio. From the main screen, enable your Bluetooth settings. To do that, you press the apps button, but it's a little complicated because there's an up arrow here and there's a, a theme icon. You don't want the theme icon because that'll just bring up themes, which you don't want. What you want to do is pull up the apps by pressing that up arrow. It's a little, a little different. Now here's Bluetooth. And what we want to do is search for Bluetooth. It finds, when you hit the search button, it'll find all the Bluetooth devices in range. That's my phone. Uh, on your phone, you need to pair to this. So press the gear to find out the name of the Bluetooth. Here, you can see it's Car Kit Blink. And the pin is 0000. zero, zero, zero. So, let's go to CarKit Blink. After you pair, T-Link comes up briefly and then CarPlay comes up. If CarPlay doesn't come up, go to your CarPlay settings on your iPhone. So there's a couple of things to watch out for that I found when installing this. Uh, first of all, there is a Wi-Fi signal sent out of this unit to start up for wireless Bluetooth. That wireless signal is called Android underscore and a bunch of numbers. If your phone, if you're in your garage pulling out and you have Wi-Fi in your house, it can connect to your house Wi-Fi and not to your Android local radio Wi-Fi. That's not a problem. You need to continue pulling out of the garage, go down the street. It'll lose the house Wi-Fi and it'll connect to its Android Wi-Fi. It's, there's nothing wrong. It's the way the system works. Um, if you have a stronger Wi-Fi signal in the house, then the Android signal, it will confuse it and it won't connect to CarPlay until you drive far enough down the street and then it will. The other gotcha is I was having trouble connecting uh, partly because I didn't understand the house Wi-Fi issue. And I decided 
to do a complete reset, factory reset. Don't do this. But if you do, there's a couple of things you need to be aware of. A factory reset will clear out some of the settings that AB Tech set up in your radio for your particular car. And one of them is the type of interface, in my case, the Highlander, Toyota Highlander. The other one is, seemed to be, for me, T-Link 5, the app, the launcher app, was completely gone. This was kind of a challenge. I had to go figure out how to reload T-Link 5 and get it running properly. Pulling down from the top screen, you can get to settings, and in settings, you'll see a whole bunch of menu items. In system, you'll see factory reset. Don't do that. Under system, you'll see factory. Tapping factory and entering one, two, three, four, five, six, gets you into the factory settings. And as you can see, my model selected as the Highlander. Um, simple, soft, Toyota, all new Highlander public. Now you can tap these and reset them. And if you do a factory reset and you have to re-enter these, this is what you want. You want 14 all new Highlander for a 2016 Highlander. You definitely want to see if there's an update available for your car. So if you're parked in the garage, you want to hook up to your home Wi-Fi. I've got mine already uh, password entered. It knows how to connect to my Wi-Fi. So there it is connected to Goulian. And then in settings, system, you've got MCU upgrade. I don't need an upgrade. System upgrade. Uh, online, you want to do an online upgrade. Check version. And I'm up to date because I've updated. Again, don't hit reset factory. Starting with network. Uh, it shows the Wi-Fi network I'm connected to. Right now it's Goulian, but if I'm driving around, of course it won't be. Display, um, brightness mode of auto. Uh, you can change the wallpaper and the font size. I do all that in CarPlay. I don't run it in Android mode. Uh, sound. You can set some sound things here. I haven't really touched this. General. Um, I like to see the car battery level up here. And I like to see the phone battery level uh, over here. And original. Show the temperature. Uh, yeah, it's 105 in here. Um, door display is kind of nice. It says when the door's open, when it's closed. Front radar display, fine. I don't think we have a front radar on this. Um, reverse settings, let's see. Um, the only thing I've got turned on is reversing radar. I think that's the blind spot monitor, but I'm not sure. Um, the only other thing I have on here, oh, you want NTSC for the reversing system. Otherwise, you won't get a good picture on the backup camera. By the way, the backup camera worked out of the box. Um, we can even show you that. So, reverse. There's my backup camera. And you get the, the lines and the lines... Uh, ch turn as you turn the wheel. It all works beautifully. Um, you have a reversing volume control. That's kind of nice. Um, not much here that I changed. Personal. Nope. Didn't change anything here. System. Uh, here's where you check for your upgrades. Don't hit factory. Reset. Here's the factory stuff. We'll do one, two, three, four, five, six, confirm. Now you have a whole bunch of things in here. Like I said, there's the Highlander setting for select models. Config info. Uh, I have RDS and color turned on. I have TV and auxiliary on, stream media app. Most of these things you don't need. You won't even miss them. Go back. Uh, channel balance I haven't played with, key update, back APK, screen reference, engineer mode. Um, 
there is an app to map keys on the steering wheel. I didn't need to do that. Everything worked. So volume works, uh, mode. Answer phone does not work in CarPlay. So don't bother with it. It doesn't work in any CarPlay. You answer the phone on the CarPlay screen. Um, and about. Now about's interesting. You want to scroll all the way down and select detection update. And you want to do any updates that you can. So hit the detection button, check the version. I'm okay because I've updated. Go back, uh, detection update, do the MCU upgrade, detect that. See if there's any updates there. Oh, I got one. I got an update apparently, okay. I did a factory reset. I had to learn a lot of things I unnecessarily uh, because I did the factory reset. Um, don't do that and you'll, you won't have that problem. It'll, it'll just be, it just, should just fire up. I will warn you that two users, meaning two Bluetooth connections can be tricky. So my wife has a Bluetooth connection and I have a Bluetooth connection. We both drive this car. So when we drive it together, who's ever Bluetooth it sees first takes priority. So in the Bluetooth list, she's top. So it gets to her first if we're both in the car. And that's kind of important. If you, if you, if you don't do that, um, the wrong person will take priority and you'll wonder why your CarPlay isn't coming up. Because whoever connects to you determines whose CarPlay comes up. And a quick way to tell if it's your CarPlay is, you know, tap the phone button and see if those are your favorite buttons, right? Yeah, I guess that's one thing I didn't show is, okay, on the main screen, don't hit the brush, that's themes. Go up, move up. Here's your Bluetooth settings, right? And there's two settings buttons, two settings apps. One gets you into here where you can set network display, sound general, blah, blah, blah. And the other one is more lower, lower level system settings. Where's CarLink? On this next screen, you have to swipe over, there's CarLink. That's the critical app. That's the app that brings up CarPlay. Okay. Now, if T-Link isn't coming up, here's what you need to do. If for some reason you're having trouble with T-Link, press, now you do want to press the paintbrush button and your themes screen will come up. Now the theme that we have is the default theme and you tap that gear in the upper right. This is uh, the launcher. It says auto start this app, which is T-Link. Go to task and it can tell you how long it takes to open that T-Link app. And I have mine set to 45. Now, the reason I have it set to 45 is when I was backing out of the garage, T-Link would start up too soon and it would blank out my reverse camera. Not cool. Uh, you want your reverse camera on for at least 45 seconds whenever you start the car because you're probably backing up. So I set mine to 45 seconds before T-Link starts up, and that solved that problem. The other problem I ran into are these power lights. They weren't lighting up. And that was a pretty simple fix, it turned out. If these buttons stop lighting up, here's what you do. Bring up your Android apps. Scroll over. Here's the color app. Use this color wheel to change the color to whatever you want. But if you don't change the color wheel, they may be off completely, like mine was. So I like mine a nice blue, kind of like that. Again, T-Link 5 is an essential app to have in your list of Android apps. If that T-Link 5 is missing, uh, and when I did a factory reset, my T-Link 5 was missing, uh, call the factory and 
fig and let them explain how to restore that app. But if you don't have that app, you don't have a launcher. And if you don't have a launcher, you don't have CarPlay. Here's another tip. When you're uh, playing around with the radio, um, you have to have accessory on, which drains the battery. Put a battery maintainer on so you don't drain the battery. Um, if you don't do that, it's not hard to kill the battery. An hour of playing with the radio settings can kill the battery and you won't be able to start it. And putting a maintainer on there uh, avoids that problem. So don't forget, use a battery maintainer when you're playing with the radio. One last thing that tripped me up was whenever we backed up, um, we didn't hear the um, the beeping on the back bumper if someone was approaching us as we backed up. And I was blaming the radio and I went through all the settings to figure out why that wouldn't be working. I spent a lot of time trying to figure out, but it's real simple. It had nothing to do with the radio. Let me show you what it was. It's called blind spot monitor. And if that's off, yeah, that back is, uh, the back sensors aren't gonna work. And you're also not gonna see uh, the uh, indicator light up in your rear view mirror that somebody's on your left or right. So I don't know how that got shut off. I might've disconnected the battery at one point. That might've done it, but make sure your blind spot monitor is enabled. Don't blame the, uh, the radio for that. Anyway, um, it's a bit rambling. Uh, a lot of things I discovered while setting up this radio. It's a great radio, I think, for the money. And the reason we replaced it was our Toyota radio completely died. And it may, it, I didn't see the point of install, spending 500 bucks for old technology. Made more sense for us to have CarPlay in the car. So now we have CarPlay in the car and we love it. Um, hats off to AB Tech for producing a great product. Very easy to install. Oh, one other item I might mention is when you put this back in, there are no bolts that hold it back in. There are four tabs, and you'll see where they go when you put this in. It just rests in the tabs. And this thing's so light, it's not gonna pop out. But also, when you put these items back in, all the trim, that helps hold it in. This does not shake, it's in there solid, not to worry. So there's no bolts that hold that in when you put it back in. Anyway, hope this was helpful. Uh, leave some comments below if you've discovered something I haven't, or if you run into problems, maybe I can help out. I can try. Uh, but remember the AB Tech customer service is very responsive. I've been going back and forth with them with questions um, ever since I got this radio, just odds and ends, things I wanted to know. It takes them a couple days, they're in another time zone, but they do get back to you and they're very helpful, so use them. Anyway, that's all I have. And uh, this is Fix It Rick. See you in the next one.